So uh, there are some useful but simple, some useful but simple Uh, some useful simple model pair potentials so some useful simple model pro uh, model pair potentials are the following One such uh, model pair potential is called Hertz sphere potential. So, what is this Hertz sphere potential? Hertz sphere potential is Hertz sphere. Uh, let's Take this as capital U since we are using capital U. So, U hard sphere potential is basically is infinity for the interparticle distance less than sigma and it is 0 when R is greater than equal to 0. So, this is uh, the Hertz sphere potential. The Hertz sphere potential tells that R which is uh, okay. So, uh, here R is basically R i j and R i j is nothing but the distance between ith particle and the jth particle. So, this is my R which is Rij. So, um, basically what it tells is that the if the interparticle interactions if the interparticle distance is less than sigma where sigma is the molecular diameter I would say at atomic diameter. atomic diameter and when r is uh, greater than 0 uh, then the potential is 0. So, if you draw this how would the potential look? So, if I have to draw u hard sphere versus r how will the potential look like? The potential so basically, uh, if you can see here, so the uh, so you are bringing up two particles together. Oops. And then, so it is like this. So, this is our sigma. So, it tells that when your r, this is the r, when r is less than sigma, the, the particles repel each other, and if r is, uh, I am sorry, I am sorry here. Uh, this would be uh, this would be sigma, and when um, R is greater than or equal to sigma, uh, then U is zero. So this is the nature of a hard sphere potential. So it is zero. Um, for any value r greater than sigma and it is infinity for r less than sigma. 
So this is heart sphere potential. So as you can see in the heart sphere potential, we have only the repulsive uh, part. The other uh, model potential is called square well potential. So the square oil potential is U square oil. It is infinity for R less than sigma 1. It is minus epsilon for R less than sigma 1 oops sorry greater than sigma 2 and it is 0 uh, let's put something like this uh, when r is greater than uh, when r is greater than equal to sigma 2. So, this is uh, the square well potential. So, if you draw the square well potential with r, how would this look like? So you see here we have two distances and we have a attractive potential here. So if I draw so for R greater than sigma 2 the potential is 0. So potential basically goes this is my uh, u is equal to 0. So, this is my e is equal to 0. Uh, this is the negative and this is the positive side of the u. So, for r greater than equal to sigma 2, my potential goes 0. For R less than sigma, so sigma 2 and between sigma 1, it is minus epsilon, and when it is less than sigma 1, it is infinity. So, this is how my square wheel potential will look like. Where is epsilon? So, this is epsilon. Uh, this distance is the sigma 1. This is sigma 1. And sigma 2 is basically this whole distance. This is sigma 2. So now, if you look at it, so this is my sigma 2. So for r greater than sigma 2, uh, my u is 0. For r between sigma 1 and sigma 2, it is uh, minus epsilon. And once the interparticle distance, so again as I said r is nothing but the r i j, 
I'm basically bringing, uh, okay, so what it is? So potential is nothing but I have particle I here, I have particle J here. And what I'm doing is basically I am bringing this J particle closer and closer to I. And in the process, how the uh, interactions, how the potential is changing. So this is exactly what I'm showing here that when J is very far away from I, they don't sense each other and therefore their interaction is zero. Uh, when J is here, that's the optimal distance where they sense each other and they attract each other. So this is a, a distance which is representing by this one that here when j is here so i and j they have an attraction uh, and their energy is minus epsilon if i take j further closer to i then they repel each other and therefore the energy shoots up and that is this r less than sigma one so this is square well potential uh, so the square well potential is also having a attractive term by minus epsilon. Uh, so square wave potential is little more complex than the Hertz square potential um, in a sense that it has a attractive term. Square wave, uh, the Hertz square did not have a attractive term. Uh, the third popular potential is called soft sphere potential. Soft sphere potential and the soft sphere potential is is equal to epsilon sigma which is again the diameter by r to the power gamma uh, which we can write simply as since epsilon is a constant sigma is a constant so i can multiply that uh, those two constants and i can write this simply as r to the power minus gamma where gamma is an integer So this is um, soft sphere potential. Uh, now, if I ask you to draw USS uh, versus R, um, what will it turn out to be? So, so the nature of USS uh, versus R uh, will be decided by this gamma factor, depending on the value of the gamma the nature of USS uh, versus R will be different. So if gamma is equal to 1 versus if gamma is equal to 12, how uh, USS versus R will look like? So this is my square soft sphere potential. So how my soft sphere potential will look like if I my gamma is 1 versus my gamma is 12. So you can uh, work it out and you know, what you will see um, that for gamma is equal to 1 or smaller gamma the potential will die down slowly whereas if gamma is 12 uh, or, or I can write it I can draw it a little better so if if my uh, gamma value is less so the function will decay very slowly 
whereas if gamma is large you can easily work out that the decay would be rather quick. So, what it indicates is that larger the value of gamma, larger the value of gamma, uh, harder the potential becomes. That means, um, as you increase the gamma value, the soft sphere potential turns out to be a hard sphere potential. So, at high value of gamma, soft sphere potential and hard sphere potential will have uh, almost the same nature. So, uh, all the three potentials, the model potentials, what we have seen, um, everyone has some advantage and also have some disadvantages. Um, hard sphere and soft sphere potential, they do not have any uh, attractive term. Uh, square well um, had an attractive term uh, uh, because it has a minus epsilon when r is between sigma 1 and sigma 2. Um, but the problem of square well potential is that uh, even though it has an attractive term, uh, but the potential is not a continuous potential. Uh, it is a discrete potential, uh, same uh, is with the hard sphere. The square well potential, uh, sorry, soft sphere potential is more continuous uh, compared to the hard sphere or the uh, or the square well potential. But here the problem is the soft sphere does not have an attractive potential. Uh, but most of the particles uh, uh, wh what we uh, see in reality and the biomolecules, they do have both an attractive and a, repul uh, and a repulsive interactions. Uh, so, they have attractions uh, at the equilibrium uh, distance and then they repel uh, at a distance shorter than that. Um, and they stay uh, at an equilibrium distance because that is the optimal distance where attraction or repulsion is basically balanced out. So, therefore, each particle uh, in practice, in reality, uh, should uh, do have, does have an attractive and repulsive potential. Uh, and therefore, scientists uh, look for um, other model potentials where uh, we have both attractive and repulsive plus the potential is uh, continuous, not the discrete potential like square well. And therefore, the next potential which is the most popular and widely used is called the Leonard Jones potential. Sorry. Okay, so, what is the Leonard Jones potential uh, expression? So, the Leonard Jones potential is ULJ R for epsilon sigma by R to the power 12 minus sigma by R to the power 6. This is the Leonard Jones potential where sigma is again the uh, atomic diameter uh, so basically um, why uh, they repel each other so basically you have one particle and uh, you know if you go back to the hard sphere potential so this is uh, one particle particle i and the other particle is j. So, basically here to here is the sigma, 
this value is nothing but a sigma. So, when the particles basically try to penetrate, penetrate each other, the potential shoots up. And epsilon is basically the uh, it's an energy function. energy depth. So, if we draw uh, u l j versus r, how would this look like? Okay. Um, so, here you must be you must have noted that this potential has uh, two terms, one is this, one is this, which is attractive, which is repulsive among these two. So, the second term represents the attraction because it has a negative sign and the first term sigma by r to the power 12, it represents the repulsion. So, it has both repulsion and attraction. And if you look at the nature of the potential, so uh, your sigma by r to the power 6, if you draw it, it would represent something like this. This is basically the sigma by r to the power 6 term. this is my 0 and if you draw the other one, it should be more continuous, uh, my drawing needs to be better. So, if you draw this one, This should be more like this. And if you merge them together, the Leonard Jones potential will look like something like this. So, this is the Leonard Jones potential. Where this depth is the epsilon, so this is epsilon, and this is obviously the sigma. And uh, this is the sigma by r to the power 12 term, the repulsive part. So, as you see here, so the u Leonard Jones over r is a continuous potential. So, the potential is very continuous. So, when you when you are bringing jth particle to the ith particle and that is how uh, sorry. So, here is your jth particle and here is your ith particle and when you are bringing j to i, um, this is how your potential is changing. So, this is basically the interparticle distance where uh, the two particles are having the best energy, the lowest energy uh, and that is the equilibrium distance. So, this is the equilibrium distance and if you push them further closer, then they try to repel. So, so, therefore, we have seen four 
uh, use, uh, very useful uh, model potentials uh, which represent the uh, interparticle interactions. Uh, they are the Hertz sphere potential, uh, the square oil potential, soft sphere potential, and finally we saw the Leonard Jones potential. Uh, so all these potentials are uh, very useful and depending on the problem you choose your model potential. Uh, as you saw that out of these four potential Leonard Jones potential is uh, more accurate because it has uh, attractive repulsive and also it is continuous um, but it uh, it is a, uh, it is more difficult um, uh, to calculate. Uh, it takes more time uh, and therefore uh, if your system is too big uh, then you better use something simpler. Hertzsphere potential even though it is very simple perhaps the simplest of all it is still widely used in physics problem like if you want to look at the association dissociation of two uh, uh, biomolecules or to, uh, to or to polymers uh, then in physics uh, Hertzsphere potential is still widely used. Um, but if you want to look at a uh, biological problem where you want to uh, design for example a small molecule uh, potential drug um, there you need to look at the atomic level interactions so their atomic uh, level uh, in-depth interactions uh, will be more useful and there instead of going for the other potential one should go for the Leonard Jones potential because it takes care of the interaction between i and j particle more rigorously uh, than the other potentials. Um, one thing I should have mentioned uh, before that all these modeling potentials what we have discussed so far uh, these are uh, these are applicable for atomic systems for atomic systems and um, so uh, um, the, for for example liquid argon if you want to use uh, any of these potentials and uh, find out the potential energy or any other thermodynamic quantity of liquid argon you can easily use one of these model potentials. Um, we will talk about it uh, when uh, how it changes to the molecular system. So these potentials what we have written are for atomic systems. Now we will see if, if we have a system uh, where um, particles are ionic. So if particles are ionic uh, if particles are ionic so apart from one of those above interactions one also has to include the electrostatic interactions which is Z i Z z by 4 pi epsilon 0 R i j where Z i Z j they are the uh, uh, atomic charges And this epsilon 0 not to be confused with the epsilon here. This epsilon 0 is basically the dielectric constant like the dielectric constant of bulk water is 78. So this epsilon 0 is the dielectric constant of the medium where these two particles are solvated. So if, if the particles are solvated in water so epsilon 0 is 78 um, which is the dielectric constant for water. R i j is the distance between i th and j th particle and j i is the atomic charge of i th particle, j j is the 
um, atomic charge on the excuse me on the jet particle. So one thing you should look at is that uh, out of these uh, five potentials what we have looked at the electrostatic is called the long range interactions ULR is called long range interactions because this interaction the inter ionic interactions are uh, are uh, experienced by the particles even when they are uh, quite apart whereas hot sphere square rail uh, soft sphere and Lennard Jones particles are there the short uh, range potentials so these are short range potentials because they are short range potentials because these potentials uh, die down pretty quickly uh, whereas the uh, long range electrostatic interaction uh, it, it exists for quite long distance so when you uh, so when your particles are ionic so you should use one of this short range potential plus you should use uh, this long range so your total u uh, for an uh, for a um, so total uh, so total potential uh, for an ionic atomic system will be total u is u short range plus u long range. So your u short range could be you can take uh, Lennard Jones plus here you can take u uh, electrostatic which is a coulomb. Uh, so uh, the previous uh, this is nothing but the coulomb's law this is a Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law uh, about the electrostatic interactions between the charged particles. Okay, so uh, uh, this is what we have discussed uh, uh, so far is for um, the atomic system. But um, in biological uh, uh, in in biology, our molecules are not uh, um, not just consist of atoms. They are other uh, composed of molecules.